I thought Villain Saga Season 2 was a letdown. I loved Season 1, but this season was boring. The easy explanation would be, it was boring because it lacked enough action scenes, but that doesn't work for me. I've enjoyed many anime that didn't have action scenes, so that can't be it. I've tackled this subject before, but I have a much better and simpler explanation now. What is Luffy's main goal in One Piece? To find the titular treasure. What is Naruto's main goal? To become Okage. But if you watched One Piece, you'd know that the story isn't a treasure hunt. And if you watched Naruto, you'd know that the story is not a presidential campaign. One Piece is about the crew saving islands from evil overlords, and Naruto is about a ninja going on missions and defeating evil organizations. What I'm getting at is that there are passive goals and active goals. Passive goals are in the background, and active goals are in the foreground. Luffy is eventually going to find the treasure, but the episode to episode goal isn't to find the treasure, it's to fight the final boss of the current island. Goals are the engine of any story and keep us invested, especially active ones. This brings me to Villain Season 2. The passive goal is for the slave duo to achieve their freedom. The active goals revolve around farming. Examples would be cutting trees, gathering wheat, getting a horse, pulling stumps, tilling the field, planting, and fishing. The passive goal is okay, but the problem is in the active goal. All of this farming stuff is in double jeopardy. Already, farming is less interesting than fighting, which puts the story at a disadvantage. The writer would have to put in extra effort to make this stuff interesting, but that's where the second punch leads to a knockout. The story barely tries to make this interesting, and fails even when it tries. A lot of their farming just serves as a background for conversations between Thorfinn and Einar. If you've seen Tenet, you know that sometimes the characters will have conversations as they cut between different locations. Where they're going doesn't matter, it's just there to make the conversation more interesting. That's kinda how villain treats his farming, except it's not as interesting. Half the time, we don't even know if they've completed their active goal. It's just implied that they did by the fact that they aren't worrying about it in the next scene. And then when the story does try to put effort into farming, like when the duo first starts, it's just not interesting. I believe that if a writer's skilled enough, they can make almost anything interesting. Volleyball, ballroom dancing, and cooking were three things that I had absolutely no interest in. But Haikyuu, Welcome to the Ballroom, and Food Wars respectively made those activities fascinating in their stories. I still wouldn't watch any of these activities outside of the anime, but when I watch these anime, I'm fully invested in the activity. Villain just doesn't have that Midas touch, that X factor, with farming. This farming stuff lasts all the way through episode 10. It feels like nothing is happening because the active goals are uninteresting. Even slice of life anime, where everything is supposed to be mundane, find a way to make their active goals engaging. Episode 11 is where the interesting plot lines actually start moving faster. This Canute scheme and the escaped prisoner. The types of active goals during these episodes are Omar and his family fighting for their lives, or Snake and his men hunting down the escaped slave. Then in episode 19, the war starts and the active goals survive in combat and defeating the enemies. Is it a coincidence that the story gets better once the active goals get better? No. I want to return to the no action argument. Even stories without action execute active goals much better. I can give you three examples of dialogue driven anime that have a single episode with more writing skill than the first half of Vinland Saga 2. The first is Death Note Episode 7. This is the one with Naomi Misora. In this episode, Light's overarching goal is to kill Naomi, but the active goals are what make this episode engaging. He wants to get her name, but she's rightfully apprehensive. He uses all kinds of lies and manipulations to get her name and eventually kill her. The fact that he's on a time limit makes all of this more engaging, because if he can't get a real name before she reaches her destination, he'll be in big trouble. My second example is Rascal Episode 1. Sakuta has the passive goal of solving Mai's supernatural problem and the active goal of learning about Mai, but she isn't easy to extract information from similar to Death Note. He eventually learns about her through witty and entertaining conversations with her. The Rascal author's ability to write engaging dialogue is an example of skill mattering. If the dialogue was boring, it could have faced the same problem as Finland. The last example is Classroom of the Elite Episode 3. The passive goal is to pass an exam. Ayana Koji and Horikita have multiple interesting active goals that lead them to that. Hori gives the weakest classmate her study notes. Koji and another girl bribe an upperclassman for answers that they eventually share with the classmates. Finally, Koji and Hori pay for one more point to ensure that no one fails. Each one of these goals were already interesting on their own, but the writer executes them in an interesting way too. None of these episodes have a hint of action and are carried by dialogue, yet they're not boring. So the problem isn't that Villain 2 lacked action, it's that the active goals were as boring as watching paint dry. The result was an unbearably passive first half of the season. The story started picking up steam in episode 11, but it was still recovering from the slump and only returned to full form for episodes 19 to 23. The final argument I will cover is about character development. I'm sure some people will argue that the story was still good, despite the quality drop in the plot because there was a lot of character development. To that, I say, if half a story is entertaining to you, don't let me spoil your fun. There are multiple parts of a story. I personally split them into plot, character, setting, and theme. I expect all four parts to be done well in a story. If a story gives me a good theme and setting but poor characters and plot, I don't care how well the theme and setting were done, it's going to lose points. The lack of one of these four parts decreases my enjoyment. In this case, the severe lack of any enjoyable plot left me in internal dread while watching most of these sad excuses for episodes. 
I even increased the speed to 6 times and was still bored out of my mind. In conclusion, Vinland Saga Season 2 was boring because it lacked interesting active goals. The active goals were based on farming, which is not that interesting, and the writing didn't try hard enough to make the farming interesting. Sometimes it was just a boring info dump. Other times, the farming was just a background activity for a conversation, kind of like how movie characters might drop exposition in a car ride. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.